Today, yesterday, and forever. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Real Community Church. Glad to have you here with us this morning. Uh, quick announcement as we get started. There will be a youth bake sale next Sunday, July 7th. So if you know how to bake some goodies, bake some goodies and bring them in so you can help support the youth uh, and uh, be a part of that. So don't forget next Sunday uh, to bring those in, be a part of help supporting the youth. I think there's no better thing that a church can support than to support young people in learning about the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Psalm 93 this morning. Just a few verses here. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also established that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted you up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Hallelujah. Let's pray to the Lord whose house is holiness forever. Hallelujah. We, yes, we praise you, Father. We magnify you, Father. We lift you up in this house. Lord, you're worthy of praise and honor this morning. Lord, we seek your face today, God. Because without you, we can do nothing. But according to your word, through you, we can do all things. This morning, we pray for your anointing to be upon every part of this service. Upon most of all upon our ears and our hearts that we might receive your word that we might hide it in our hearts that we might be changed this day in the name of Jesus we pray, amen we probably won't be able to get around and shake everybody's hand but go out and shake a couple hands as we go into worship this morning, fellowship, say hello to a few people and let's worship the Lord amen from the rising to the setting sun Love endures forever By the grace of God He will carry on Love endures forever He prays He prays He prays He prays Forever God is faithful 
are awesome, God. Hallelujah.
Father God. Lord, we worship you, Father God. I am hope. I am peace. I am joy. And I am rest. I am your comfort and your relief from your stress. I am your strength and I am your faith. And I am your love and your power and your freedom in this very hour. Hallelujah. I am to him for all of his blessings. I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth to the most part of all who met Abraham being burning from the slaughter of the king of righteousness and blessed, and after that also king of Salem, which king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto him the Son of God, about it, the priest continued. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoil. This great man Abraham gave a tenth. As I've said before, Parents, teach your children tenth of the spoil to give a tenth. This great man to pay tithes. If you want them to be blessed, you want to be blessed, give a tenth. Father Abraham, great as he was, gave a tenth. Brother John, would you pray, please? Mm-hmm. 
Amen. God bless you. Thank you for giving today. God will bless you. I witness to you that God does bless when we give a tenth. God bless you.
going to do some praying right now. I praise the Lord for Sister Hoover and her testimony this past week. The Lord's been moving in her body. She's moving her hand a little bit better. She's able to walk a little bit this week with the, with the help of a cane. But the Lord's not done here with this need yet. The doctor says she needs some stents. There's some blockage. But I know that the power of the Lord can free that up even right now, even this this morning. If you're nearby, reach your hand to Sister Hoover right there and begin to pray for her. Heavenly Father, we stand on your word. We 
thank you, Lord, for the testimony of what you've done last week. And it was just the beginning. You're not done. You're not finished. You, you desire to make our whole complete, and our faith is being built up. We're not giving up, but we're building up our faith on what you did last week. We're anticipating and waiting and longing to see the miracle take place even this morning. Lord, freeing her up to worship without any inhabitation, without any hindrance, Lord. Let our hands be raised. Let our feet be able to walk. Just to set her free today, up. oh God. We're not giving we up, worship. but we're building we up thank our you, faith Lord. on what you did last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We to see the miracle today Hallelujah. this morning. Lord, free her up to worship and longing to see the miracle take place even this morning. Lord, freeing her up to worship without his hands be raised. Week. On Friday, we had some loss. Some Our family here has lost family. We're going to just lift up a prayer of peace right now for Sister Cheryl. Her brother passed away on Friday. Then later on that day, Brother Russ got a call that his uncle was in a hospital. He had a heart attack also and and he passed away. This is morning times. We, we pray there's going to be a time of grieving for, for them. But we have a God who gives us peace. We may not understand why and why, why this took place and why does this happen. But we have a God who gives us peace, who's in control of all things. Amen? Heavenly Father, we pray for peace right now. For Sister Cheryl and her family, oh God, that... That somehow through the midst of this, that someone can hear about the peace of God and that they'll experience the peace of God and that they'll long for the presence of the Lord in their life. We pray for the family, O oh Lord, every one of them, that you'll just touch and reach them. We pray for those who are going to be at the funeral, that they'll hear the truth, that there is an end to this life when we're walking here on earth. But God, there's a hope that is in you, that our life can be eternal. You have a place prepared for those who call on your name. We pray that salvation will come through these deaths because you pay the altar price through your death. And this journey that we're on is just temporary we're traveling this earth. Pray for Brother Russ and his family, for his mother. Offer peace there and give it only as you can. And again, we're praying that through this, someone might hear the truth of the gospel. That there's a hope waiting for us. And that's what we stand on. We give you praise. We give you praise. Amen. As you're being seated, I want to also share that there's people praying for us. In my hand, I have a, an envelope. And inside, there's a, a prayer cloth. Anybody believe in prayer cloths? You know about prayer cloths? It's, when you can't be with the people, you just take a simple cloth and you anoint it and you pray over it. And there's no power in this cloth, but it symbolizes and it represents the power of God that people were praying for us. The church in Noblesville, under the leadership of Pastor Chad Muncy, has had a heart for us. And he has taken this cloth and their church has surrounded this and anointed this and prayed over this and are praying for us. And I thank the Lord that they're doing that. And that somebody is thinking about us other than us. Amen? And the Lord is blessing them. So I'm going to pray right now a prayer for them. Can we do that? Can we send back some of the things they're sending our way? Prayers and offering them to call the merge. They're wanting to see those who are lost and undone being merged in to the church. And that they'll find out what true salvation is and what true life is being taken out of this world. Can we lift them up right now in a prayer? Heavenly Father, we lift up Pastor Chad Muncy and, and for the Noblesville Church, for the merge, Lord, that you'll reach down even this very hour as the message is probably being preached right now or they're finishing up praise and worship to you. Lord, bless them. This is a church that had life, had growth, had ministries, and over time the enemy has attacked and has brought it down little by little. But Lord, you have breathed in new life. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch that church. Minister to it. Let there be a breakthrough today, O oh Lord, that your anointing and power falls. Lord, that you're sending lost souls. You're sending new people there, O oh God. And Lord, I, I know as we pray over them and we send out blessings to them, you will pour out your blessings on us. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
One more that we're wanting to pray for. I was finishing up camp this Friday and the pastor was coming by to pick up his students. His name is Pastor Smith, Truman Smith from Fort Wayne. He's 75 years old, still preaching the gospel. And he says, will you have your church remember my wife? She's beginning the first stages of Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's and, and dealing with that. And, and that's a, a tough place to be. And he says, I want you to pray. And I'm, we're going to do that this morning. Just pray for Sister Smith. Heavenly Father, we honor this request by this pastor who's preached your word. His wife has been so faithful to you. They've served you, O oh God. They've served this church. And they've served the kingdom of God. They've given food to the area of Fort Wayne for many years. A lot of people have been fed through their ministries. And the enemy, all he desires is to steal, kill, and destroy. But we come against that in the name of Jesus. He has no authority over us and over our lives. But you do, O oh God. And we surrender. And we pray for Sister Smith right now. Touch her mind. Touch her body. Strengthen her, O oh Lord. And we magnify your holy name. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about this morning. The presence of the Lord is here in this place. It sounds like you're glad to be here too. Even at the beginning, uh, before service started, uh, congregating out in the, in the foyer around the coffee table. I don't know if the caffeine kicked in or what, but you guys were laughing and giggling and talking. That's what we like to hear. That's what we want people who've never been here to come in to see. People full of joy. People full of life. Amen? And that's why we're here, to celebrate the life that God has given us. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning to the book of Luke, chapter 22. I want to think about this theme that, in the title, if I would give us a title this morning, is Jesus has prayed for you. Starting in Luke, chapter 22, verse 31, this is what the Lord says, Simon, Simon indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Jesus is coming to Simon Peter right before the crucifixion is the setting here. He's telling Simon, Satan has a desire to sift you as wheat. He wants to separate you. He wants to bring you out. If anybody has ever sifted wheat before, you take it and you're moving around and it's to separate and spread it out. We talk about separation and when we talk about sanctification, right? We want to be separated from the world that we may do ministry for the kingdom of God. We're praying for a separation for us, a sanctification. That this is not the separation that was taking place. Jesus warns Peter that Satan desires to sift you. He wants to separate you from me, from the body, from what God has in store for you. He desires to attack you. This is one of Christ's disciples, been walking with Jesus for the last three years. And Jesus is warning him, even though you've been walking with me, even though you've been right here, I've been protecting you. Satan desires to get a hold of you. He wants to separate you out. He wants to get your mind on the wrong things. He wants to, he wants to challenge you. The interesting part of this word, figuratively used here, it's, a, it's an inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge to overthrow. He, Satan desires to agitate us, to challenge our faith to the extreme that we may get to the place, to the verge that we're overthrown. Hear this today. It doesn't matter how long you've been serving the Lord. If you're new, your special spiritual attacks are there. If you've been in it for a while, the enemy doesn't give up on you. He still continues to attack. If you've been in it a long time, the enemy still desires to attack you, to challenge your faith to the place that you are ready to give up. But we have strength today. Listen to what Jesus says, verse 32. But I have prayed for you. I don't know about you, does that give you comfort this morning? Jesus is saying this to Peter. But I have prayed for you. He didn't say, I'm praying that you don't experience any of these troubles. He didn't say, I'm praying that you're not going to go through any of these troubles. 
In fact, John chapter 16 says that be of good cheer. says, you know, Satan is coming. He's going to try to destroy you. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. It says, in this world you're going to have tribulations. In this world you're going to have troubles. In this world you're going to have trials. But you can be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus is saying to Peter right now, I have prayed for you. If we think that Jesus could say, you know, I'm going to pray that you don't experience this. I'm going to pray that the enemy doesn't try to attack you. I'm going to pray that you're so safe that you don't even realize there is an enemy. But that's not what he's saying. The enemy is going to try to get you, Peter. I'm warning you ahead of time. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's out to bring you down. He's out to bring confusion to you. He's out here to get a hold of you. But I'm praying for you. I'm praying that when it's all through, listen to this verse here. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Now this is interesting here. The writer, as he's writing this out, all we see is that he says, but I. But he writes this out in a, in a way that, with emphasis, is actually saying, and I myself have prayed for you. A lot of emphasis. Not, I'm not just praying. He's, I myself, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, have prayed for you. Not that you're not going to go through this, but that your faith will not fail. Faith is what keeps us going. We're going to experience trials. We're going to experience heartaches. We're going to experience times that we just want to give up. But Jesus is praying that our faith will not fail. Sister Hoover, your faith will not fail. You keep your faith in Jesus Christ. He will bring you through. No matter what we face here as a church, do not let your faith fail. Stand firm on His Word. Stand firm knowing that He will bring us through. He'll bring us through the fight. We may go through the battles, but we're not going to die on the battlefield. Do not let your faith become weak. Do not let your faith fail. And this is why. This is what's powerful here. He says that when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. You're going to go through some trials, Peter. You're going to go through some temptations. In fact, Peter, you're going to fail. But I'm praying that your faith doesn't completely fail. Because I know if you don't let your faith completely die out, even though you might mess up and that you may have done something wrong, even though you may give in a little bit, but don't let your faith completely fail to a complete utterance, complete destruction. Hold on, because here's how the enemy works. Oops, I failed. I messed up just a little bit. I, I didn't have enough faith there. and I, I, I made a wrong decision here. I did it the wrong way. I said the wrong thing, and I reacted the wrong way. The enemy begins to start talking to us. You see, you're no good. You can't be used anymore. Those people won't accept you anymore. They don't want you even around. You're worthless. If you fail this time, you think you're going to be strong enough to hold up the next time? I'll come against you even harder the next time. You might as well give up now. You don't want to be in a fight with me. That's how the enemy works. But Jesus said, I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. That your faith will not come to an end. But he says, when you make it through this test, how many knows we're going to make it through the test? We're going to make it through the trials. We're going to make it through the battles. We'll make it through the fights. We're going to make it. Just say that right now. I'm going to make it. Now say, we're going to make it. The enemy may try to come and destroy, and we can't, be a, we, we can't be surprised. We know that he's out there. We're not giving him any glory. We're not trying to honor him. But the reality is that we have an adversary that's trying to attack. But we stand up. Now, this is also not a place to try to give an allowance for failure. Don't, you know, it's all right. I'll, I'll just, I'll make, win this battle, I'll win the next. No, we need to stand up and fight. The warning for Peter is, you don't have to fail, Peter. I'm warning you now, but you're probably going to mess up. 
So I'm telling you here, when Satan comes against you with temptations, you don't have to fall to those temptations. You can stand up. You can be strong. Not in your own power. Not in your own might. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can overcome those temptations. This is not a message of just wiping it over and say, hey, you don't have to. You can, everybody's going to sin a little bit. and make. We're going to be tempted, but you don't have to fall to those things. Jesus wasn't given an allowance for Peter to fail. He's warning him, the enemy is going to attack. Your, te- your faith is going to be tested. But when you come through the testing, go back and strengthen the brothers. Go back and let them know that you can make it through. Go back and let them know that I have empowered you. Let them know that you, you failed and that you need forgiveness. So here's what happens next. This is what Peter says. Verse 33. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. He didn't realize he was actually going to go to prison later on. But he said, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to prison. Even at death, I'll I'll stand up. He was having confidence. But it was in himself. It wasn't in the Lord. He hasn't experienced a lot of hard trials yet. He hasn't experienced all the things that Jesus was going to suffer. They were involved in a great ministry. He saw people being delivered, set free, set free from demon possession. He saw the 5,000 fed a couple of different times. He saw the blind eyes open. Think about it. Peter is saying, I'm not going to fail against you. I'm not going to do those things. I've been with you, O Lord. I saw the great things. I'm not going to let my faith get weary. I know what you're able to do. You were, I've been right there with you the whole time. I was there when you opened up the deaf ears. I, I was there when you told the, the man who couldn't stretch out his hand, stretch out your hand. I saw the blind eyes open. I saw you raise the dead. I'm not going to fail against you. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I know what you can do. He had confidence, but it wasn't in Jesus. It was in himself. Because Jesus, right after that, he says in verse 34, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you even know me. Peter was offended to hear the potential of his weakness. You hear that? Peter was offended to hear the potential of his weakness. It offends us sometimes when we hear a message that you need to be careful because the enemy desires to kill and steal and destroy your life. And if you're not praying, and if you're not reading, you're susceptible to that. You have to have your daily walk with him. How do I know this? I've seen and heard, you have seen and heard people who've been of the faith for many years just walk away. Or come to find out they had some kind of moral moral failure in their life. And you wonder why. Because the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And if we are not submitted completely to God, He will not give up on you. He will continue. This is not to try to depress you. Don't (laughs) we'll get some here. Don't get depressed and discouraged. This is a part of the walk. Peter, or Paul even says that he, he enjoys and he, and he gloried in the sufferings along with Christ. We just got to know what kind of fight we're in. I don't like surprises, do you? I'd rather know ahead of time what I'm facing so I can be prepared to deal with it. Jesus is clearly saying, Peter, I'm telling you ahead of time, you're about to face a battle. But Peter says up in his own flesh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fail against you. I'm strong. Don't boast in your confidence of commitment until you are able to live humility and honesty. Listen one more time. Do not boast about your confidence of commitment until you are able to live humility and honesty. It doesn't mean you have to go around and tell everybody your sins. That's not what it's talking about. But we've got to be humble and be honest about our our humility, not in self-promotion, but and not going on with our head down. Humility is not walking around with your head down. 
But humility is saying, God, I know I'm nothing without you. Peter could have stood up right there and said, Jesus, I don't want to fail you. Help me not fail you. I want to stand strong. I, I need you. I'm, I'm hurt that you're saying that I'm weak in this. Will you help me through this? But instead, he denied what he heard. He denied the warning. See it so many times before when somebody is warned about something. I, I don't want to hear that. I don't care about warnings. A lot of times we rip the warning label off of things, don't we? You've cut the pillow tag things off. You don't think there's any danger there, right? <laughs> you see a warning label on something, you're like, ah, that's not for me. I don't need to, I don't need to listen to that and take it off, ignore it. And then you end up getting burnt by something you should have, ah, oh, I didn't read the warning. I didn't think it applied to me. We've all been there. We've all done those things. Heed to the warning, as the Word says to us, that we've got to have our heart completely turned to Him and be aware of, that the enemy is looking for us. But greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. Amen? So we have to be in that place of humility. Living in it honestly. If you know your heart's not completely right with Christ. If you know that there's some things wrong in your life. You need to stand up before the Lord. You don't have to, it's not about telling everybody else your sins. It's about standing up before God and say, God, I'm not right with you. I need to be sanctified. I want to live a holy life. I know I can't have the confidence that I need to have until I'm able to submit and humbly recognize I'm not strong in myself, but I need your strength in me. There's a lot of talents and ability God's given us, given His people, that we're able to do with natural strength and power. But it's when we take confidence in that over confidence in Him, where pride begins to stand up, and then the fall begins to happen. We've got to stand humbly before the Lord, bowing before Him. God, I need You. Pray for me. The Scripture says, Jesus says, I'm praying for you, Peter. Romans chapter 8 says this, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is still praying for us. When we don't know what to pray, we can cry out to the Lord, I need you, O God. And the Spirit of the Lord begins to speak through us with groanings that we can't even understand. He's praying on behalf. Jesus is still praying us in our weakness. There is hope in our weakness. The Spirit of the Lord is still making intercession for us even today. Are you thankful for that this morning? Are you excited about that today? Are you, are you living in that, that I know that I'm not in this by myself? That's why He sent the Spirit to us. He says it's important that I go away, that I may send to you another comforter, so He may be with you. He's making intercession for us. He's reaching up to heaven where Jesus is sitting right now on the throne room of God, and He's making intercession that in our weakness He's, he's there for us. We can't do anything of ourselves spiritually in the flesh. We need the power of of God in our lives. And the Spirit is making intercession. I can't get past that this morning. When you begin to pray for this service this morning, before you even got here, the Spirit of the Lord heard your prayers. He's grabbing those prayers up. He's collecting them, running them through the throne room of God. Here are the prayers of the saints. They need your touch today, O oh Heavenly Father. They need your touch, O oh God that you'll reach down and meet them right where they're at. They can't do it in their own strength. They can't do it in their own power. They need your touch this morning. If you need a touch of the Lord this morning, you know that I can't do it in my own strength. There's nothing I can do for you. I can pray for you. But the Lord needs a touch you today. If you're here to say, I just need a touch of the Lord, can you reach up your hands toward heaven? Begin to say, God, I need you, O Lord. I need you, O God. Reach down and touch me. Hallelujah. You know the story. Peter failed him. He denied him. 
Jesus was crucified. He was buried. Peter watched on the skirts and even ran away. But let's fast forward just a little bit. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. We celebrate that, amen? He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He did it for our sins, that we may be reunited with Him, that we make it right with us, that we can live righteous before Him. That's what the power of the cross does. It helps us to live righteous. That we don't have to fail to these things. Lord, I desire, I want to live a righteous life. And I know I can't do it in my own strength and power, but I humbly and honestly come before you and say, God, I need your righteousness, not mine. I want your direction, not mine. I want your will, not mine. He's a holy God. He's a real God, amen? Last night, I was trying to get to sleep and Somebody thought it's the 4th of July. It's not yet. <laughs> Fireworks are going off everywhere and making loud noise. So we, we turned on the TV for a little bit and made a mistake. I'm trying to sleep and I thought, well, maybe a little sound will help reduce some of the other noise. And I can. You ever been like that where you hear somebody just talking and you don't pay attention to what they're saying, but it's kind of soothing and you just kind of drift off to sleep? My wife does that all the time to me. I, I talk and she falls asleep and she's so comforted. But I, she found and, and recorded a, a Christian comedian. So we turned it on. That's the stupidest thing to do right before you're trying to fall asleep. I'm, I've got my head down and he says something and I'm starting to laugh. I can't, you can't fall asleep when you're, when you're laughing. I'm thinking, I just listened to a little bit of this. This is going to be calming. She's laughing. I'm not watching him. I'm trying to avoid it. I just wanted to hear some sound other than the fireworks and everything he's saying, cracking me up, laughing. And my wife loves to laugh. I'll laugh. I'll chuckle inside. I don't really bust out laughing unless I'm with my brothers. They were here last week visiting. I thank the Lord for that. And, and we get together. We laugh till we cry. And, and it's, it's embarrassing everybody around them and even us, but we don't care. But my wife, she loves to laugh out loud over little things. And, and I love that about her. She's smiling right now, ear to ear. I, I just love it. That's a, one of the things that attracted me to her. The joy of the Lord. Can I just take a second and tell you about this? I don't mean to get off track too much, but what brought it... Uh, men, you need to hear this. And women, you need to hear this. When you're finding that, that mate, if you're not married yet, and if you are married, look at what God has put into your spouse. Before we were married, I was on the praise team at a church. It's designed a lot like this, and... I was standing over here, and she always sat on the front row with her family, and she was a worshiper. She would raise her hands, she'd kick her shoes off, and she had this expression of praise that was real and authentic. It wasn't for anybody else, and I could see in her face from there she truly loved the Lord. That drew me to her. I don't know what drew me to her to me, but that's what I, that's what I was looking at for her. And I know that her heart was real with God. I, as a side note, you seek the Lord and you love the Lord. God is placed within us. We are spiritual beings. And you know what attracts people to each other? God. And if you love the Lord with all men, if you love the Lord with all your heart, your wife will love you if she's right with God. She'll see God in you and she doesn't want anything else. But listen, the enemy desires to sift you as wheat. He wants to separate you. He wants to distract you. He wants your wife not to look at you in the right way. But if we will turn our hearts to God and hear the warning and humble ourselves to be men in prayer, our wives will be attracted to us. It's not because of the clothes that you wear or the cologne that you spray on, but it's the glory of the Lord shining out through you. And vice versa. Ladies, Fall in love with the Lord more today than ever before. Show Him your heart. Give Him your heart. Surrender your will to Him. I'm willing to be a woman of God. What you want me to be, I'll submit like you want me to submit. I'll live like you want me to live. I'll honor like you want me to honor. And you will see a marriage that is bound and, and held together by God's hand. You ask how this relates this morning? Because the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. 
And if we're not willing to stand up and be humble before the Lord and say, God, I need you. I need you in my walk, in my marriage, in my life. And I can't do it in my own strength. I can't fix it. But I can lean on you. But listen to this. After he rose again from the dead. Mark chapter 16, verse 5. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where he laid. Now listen to this verse. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going to before you to Galilee. There you will see him and he, as he said to you. He says, go tell them I'm risen. And go tell Peter. Now it's easy to read past that and Peter. But here's what he says. If you look at the original language there, the word used for and, it can be translated a couple of different ways. And or or is one. Another way that doesn't get used very often is even. I want you to go tell the disciples, even Peter. You may feel like you fell the Lord at times. And you may feel like that I don't belong here anymore. I don't belong with this group. And the church won't receive me. And the, the, the kingdom of God won't. I, I felt that Jesus is saying, stand up, don't let your faith fail. But I'm letting you know, I'm going to meet those, even you. He's calling even you back to a place where you can have, you can be in service. Look what Peter does after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, after his ascension. He was there on the day of Pentecost. Who preached the message that the day that the Pentecost fire fell? It was Peter because he heard the word. Go tell Peter, even Peter, that I love him, that I want to use him, that I have a purpose for him. I have a plan for his life. In just those same words, Jesus has a plan for you. He has a destiny for your life. He has a purpose for your life. He wants to use you. He can use even Peter. He can even use me. He can use even Peter. He can even use you. If you're in this place this morning, and say, I want to be one of the evil ones, not one of the odd ones. Will you stand up right now as our musicians are coming back this way? I want to be an evil one. I want to be one of those that I surrender. I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I have failed and I know that I'll probably mess up somewhere down the line. I'm not talking about gross sin. I'm talking about just not always hitting the right mark. But I desired when in those times I know that God will bring me back if I'll stay humble before Him. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're in this place this morning, And you would just say, I just need that fresh touch of the Lord. I need to draw closer to Him. I need Him. I know I'm not perfect. But I need to live righteous before Him. And I need a fresh touch this morning. Will you just raise your hand? you raise your hand without any hesitation I want you to begin to fill these altars begin to just cry out before him if you feel like kneeling kneel if you feel like standing stand but if you're saying I just want a touch of the Lord he's here in this place today oh Lord we worship you how great is our God sing with me how great
we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we do anything else, I just want to say a pastoral prayer over this congregation. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We honor you, O oh God. That is the purpose of this place before anything else. This is a house of worship. We declare right now we will be a people of worship. We'll be a people of your word. This will be a refuge for the lost and sinners, yes. But Lord, this will be a house of worship. Before we do anything else, we will honor you. We were created to honor you. We were created to worship you. We were created to give you praise and glory. As the angels in heaven right now are saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We agree with them. We stand in this place and we declare, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And when we make this a place of worship, when we determine that's what we're here for, you will open up the doors so those who are lost and undone will come into that place. Just like Isaiah, when he was in your presence, he could not do anything but fall down and weep and say, I'm not, uh, I'm not worthy of this. But then you reached out. You sent one of the seraphims. He got a hot coal off the altar. He touched his lips and he purged them and he sanctified him. Lord, you're going to do the same thing. As we worship, you honor that. You will fill this place with your presence. Those who come in cannot handle your presence if they're not right with you. You begin to move on their hearts. They will then then declare, I cannot take this anymore. Touch me, O oh God. They give their life to you, and we will minister to them. So, Lord, I pray over this congregation. We need to be righteous. We need to live a righteous life. We need to be holy. We cannot live in the world during the week and come here and expect your...